Good morning, Spirit Walk family, friends, guests. We are so glad that you are tuning in this morning. If you're watching live or if you're watching later, we are so honored. We are so glad that you are cho you've chosen to tune in. Normally, we'd say welcome home. I know it's a little different, uh, but thank you for your patience and understanding with us going live this week, and we will actually be going live next week. But thank you so much for staying faithful. Thank you so much for loving on us. Thank you for your prayers while we do all of what's different. Um, but we know that God is still in control. No matter what changes around us, no matter what is happening around us, God is still faithful. God is still on the throne. God still loves us. And we believe that in the midst of the craziness, as Scripture says, when we are weak, God is strong. He is made stronger in our weaknesses. So when we are changing, when we are shifting in this world, God is still for us. And it doesn't matter who is against us. Before uh, we start the sermon, we'd still like to pray. We have certain prayer requests from our Spirit Walk uh, family members. Uh, they are having surgery tomorrow. We've got sicknesses. Uh, we've got some in the hospital due to viruses, the virus and different things. But we're believing that God can heal in this building. We believe that God can heal wherever you are, wherever they are. And we believe that as we pray, where two or three are gathered, Pastor and I, if nobody else agrees, Pastor and I will agree, and we believe that God will do miraculous things. So before he comes and starts the word, let us pray. If you need anything, reach out to us on Facebook. Message us. Go to our website, spiritwalkministries.com. You can send in your prayer request that way or comment below if you need anything. So let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. God, Things are crazy around us. Things are changing around us. But God, you are the same. You remain the same. Your word never changes. And your word says that you came to give life and life more abundantly. Your word says that you died so that we could live. You died so that we could receive healing. You died on the cross so that we could have a right relationship with the Father. And God, we believe that wherever people are watching, whoever they are praying for, whenever they are watching, we are believing that you are saving souls, you are touching minds, bodies, and spirits. You are changing lives. What doctors said is impossible, you are doing the impossible. You are turning things around. What doctors, what man, what financial people have said, what looks in the physical, you are changing it. You are restoring order in the kingdom. You are protecting, providing, and ministering to your children. And God, in the midst of everything else, we pray that you would open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, touch our hearts to receive, clear our minds this morning so that we could receive the word. And we believe that as we continue on this time of prayer and fasting as we continue on this time of seeking your face we know that when we seek the kingdom of god and its righteousness first everything else will fall into place everything else will be given unto us everything else will be taken care of so god as we continue to seek your face help us to trust in you help us to never lose faith that you will take care of us we love you we honor you. We thank you again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Here comes Pastor, and we pray that you enjoy the word. Good morning, Spirit Walk. Um, just wanted to, a, a couple of things, that uh, details that uh, I, I want to add to what Tyler said. Um, <clears throat> one, please be in prayer for Denise. Uh, Sister Denise, she is in the hospital. During this week, she was diagnosed with COVID, <laughs> flu, and pneumonia. Uh, she had the trifecta. Uh, the pneumonia has cleared up, according to the doctors, and we're grateful for that. We've been praying for her, and we ask you to join us in praying for uh, praying for Denise. Brother Don Meredith is having surgery tomorrow on his uh, one of his eyes for cataract. Um, so be in prayer for him. Um, 
And I just, I just want to encourage you right now. Um, I mentioned this during the week, I think, Wednesday night, that, uh, that it seems like the, the, having the couple of services, and then we've got to get out and not have a service because of the COVID and all that. It disrupts, it disrupts the flow of the, the, the ministry in this church. It, it disrupts the flow of, of how God wants, I feel like God wants to move in this church. And I say that, but I know God's in control. And I know that he, he knew this was going to happen. And, um, but it messes us up, it seems like. And so uh, just want to ask you to continue to pray for the church and, and, and uh, continue to remember to be faithful in supporting through watching the online services, through your giving. Um, the bills don't stop just because we don't have service. Uh, and so I want to remind you of that, to be faithful in the giving because we still have to pay bills here, just like you do at home. So um, I, I wanted to take this time. In fact, the title of my sermon today is Crazy Times. And don't we live in some crazy times? I mean, if you watch what happened this last week and, and everything that was going on at the Capitol, and, and it seems like over the last several months things have been crazy. We've watched what's going on in Minneapolis and New York and Portland and other areas of the country, and it, and it, it, it feels like the world is getting out of control. It feels like the world is, is uh, not the world we grew up in. I know it doesn't feel like the world I grew up in, um, but I, I wanted to take this time and, and just remind you that God is still in control. And so I've got some verses, and, and when I was thinking about it, I was doing my, my research for today, and, and I came across something I thought you guys would find funny. Um, when asked if she wanted kids with her, her new man, country star Miranda Lambert's response was, I wouldn't want to bring a kid into this crazy world right now. Uh, and isn't that the truth? Uh, or it seems that way. Um, again, it seems that the world has gone off its rocker. It seems that everything is crazy. But in the middle of it, I want to remind you again, God is still in control. And so I want to look at this idea of crazy times. And, and I, almost titled this, uh, I almost titled this sermon, uh, We Have a New President, So What? Um, I want to talk about this transition time. I want to talk about right now and what, what we see going on in this world. Uh, so if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to read a brief portion of Scripture, and then we're going to go through the book of Acts, and we're going to blow through the book of Acts real quick and some certain things that happen. But I, want to, I don't want to be long. I know that this is hard to watch on screen, and, and I get it, and, and I appreciate your faithfulness and your patience. But I want you to read Matthew chapter 10. We're going to start at verse 16. And we're just going to read a couple, two or three verses here. It says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues, and you shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what you shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Now I'm going to come back to that, but I want you to remember this passage. I want you to remember that the, the Lord is going to send us forth as sheep among the wolves. I want you to remember that he says it's going to happen. I want you to remember that he says that even in that time that they're going to bring you up before the council. They're going to bring you up before the, 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 the local authorities. They're going to bring you up before the national authorities. They're going to try to silence you. I know I've seen all the conspiracy theories about they've shut down President Trump on Twitter and they're going to shut you down too and they've talked to all this kind of stuff. Listen, folks, it was bound and determined to happen. Why is that? Because we have within us and we have in front of us the message and the word that offends Satan, and he is the prince and the ruler of this world. He's the one in charge of this atmosphere and this world that we see. And so because we have that, he has got to work everything that he can 
to be against us. And, it, and you know, the, it's, it's the old saying of, of a death by a thousand paper cuts. He's not going to overtake the world. He's tried that. It didn't work. He tried that with rulers and, and dictators of the past, and it didn't work in it to his advantage. So he's trying to slowly but surely just turn things one little decision at a time against the children of God and against Christ and against this message. And so we've got to understand that when we go out in the world, we're going out as sheep among wolves, but we're not alone. We're not alone. That even in, when, even in that hour that we're brought up before counsel, in that hour that you're confronted with an unbeliever, in that hour that you're confronted with somebody hostile, in that hour that you're brought up before a, a governor or a mayor or a council or anybody that tries to silence or censor you, you will not be alone. He says, even the words that you speak won't be yours. They'll be the Spirit speaking in you and through you. And so we have to remember we are not alone. And can I say this for you parents? Listen, we talk about this is not a world that we, used, that we grew up in. God knew that. I said this last week. I've been saying this for weeks and even months. God knew the craziness this world was going to be in and still chose to have you during this time and your children. So we must, we have to, we can't shelter our kids from the craziness of the world. We need to tell them about the craziness of the world. We need to expose it to them and to show them what it's like and prepare them to live in a world like today. Folks, it's no time to raise a bunch of of sissies and i'm not trying to be ugly and i'm not trying to be politically incorrect we can't raise sissies we got to raise men that will be strong with a backbone and be men and we got to raise women of character and integrity who know what it is to stand up for what is right that is our job as parents and we have got to come to that determination that we're going to raise them in a world that's crazy in a world that wasn't like the world i grew up in but it's happened before, folks. It's happened before. We're going to take a quick trip through the book of Acts. And when I say quick, I mean quick. We're going to go all the way through it. But I want you to have your, get your Bibles and just start. We're going to start on Acts chapter 1, and we're going to start flipping through. And I want to show you some things. This is not the first time the world has gone crazy, folks. This is not the first time it seems like things have been out of hand. This is not the first time it seems like we're living in dangerous times and that you can't say what you think or what you feel. And so I want to go through, uh, we're gonna, in fact, we're going to flip through crazy times in the book of Acts. Go to Acts chapter 12. And we're going to be flipping back and forth, so just bear with me. Acts chapter 12, starting in verse 20. I want to show you this. Uh, and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with him with one accord, excuse me, to him, and having made Blastus the king's chamberlain, uh, their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. Now I'm going to stop right there. We're going to come back to this passage. Everywhere I go, we're going to come back. Um, but can, you, I, can, I, can, I, can I draw some correlations between this? I'm going to make some correlations between this and what we see happening today. Herod comes in, he speaks, and they, and they give audience. It is the voice of a God and not of a man. Um, can, I, can I just be completely honest and transparent with you? Um, uh, I, I, uh, I love our president, the one who still is our president. <clears throat> I love his policies. I love that he stood for life and and and, uh, and and pro-life i love that he stood for freedom of religion i love that he stood for freedom of speech i love that he stood for israel i love that he stood for jerusalem i love all those things but when he speaks he is still a man and i think that so many people in this country have so lashed on to the personality and the persona. I mean, he is a larger-than-life character that when Trump speaks, what he says is like the voice of a God. It's fact simply because he said it. Can I say something? 
Tr Donald Trump is a man. He puts his pants on the same way that I do. And just because he said it doesn't mean it's right. It's not gospel just because Donald Trump said it. And we've gotten so latched on to our political identities and ideologies and so latched on to personalities that people on the right think that Donald Trump is the answer and people on the left think, it jo think that Joe Biden is the answer. Folks, Donald Trump is not the answer. And folks, I hate that voted the other way. I hate to tell you, Joe Biden is not the answer. And when they speak, they speak as a man. It is not the voice of a God. And I, and I, and I appreciate all the rallies that have supported Trump, but he gets out there and he spouts out stuff, and sometimes it's not right, and sometimes it's hateful, and sometimes, can I be honest, sometimes it's juvenile, and the way he has acted about uh, some things that have happened in the last week or two, again, I love him, but he's not been right. And some of us have stood up and said, oh, but it's Trump, and we got to stand behind it. Listen, my identity as a man and my identity as a, as, as, a, as a child of God and my identity and my ideology and what I believe is not wrapped up in a man. It's not even wrapped up in a political party. In fact, Charles Spurgeon said that to live for a political party is unworthy of a man who professes to be a Christian. We've got to understand that who we are is not wrapped up in a political platform, a party platform, the Republican Party or the Democratic Democratic Party. Our identity is wrapped up in a man and his name is Jesus Christ and who we are in relationship with him. And the things that I believe are based on this word, not a party platform. And so we've got to get past this, this notion that Donald Trump is, is, represents all in all in who we are. No, he does not. He is not the voice of a God. He is a man. And we have got to understand that, and, and that was happening back then, and I see it happening today. I see it happening today. I'm not saying you are, but if I'm stepping on your toes, then take it. Take it like a man. Take it like an adult. Take it like a woman. They immediately gave shout, it's the voice of a God and not a man. And the whole city was in pandemonium. The whole city was in pandemonium because of the voice of one man. I'm not trying to disparage any person. Please, just hear my heart. But when I see the rallies and I hear the cries of people that are calling out for, for vengeance or for violence as they stand at, the, at a Trump rally or a Biden rally or, they, or, or whatever rally it may be, I see a group of people who are idolizing. They're making a God of a man or a platform or a party, and it's wrong. It's wrong. They gave a shout saying it is the voice of a God and not a man. Now flip to Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18, verse 2. Just one little statement here real quick. Oh, here it is. Uh, verse 2. This is Paul, he came to Athens from Corinth, and he found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome. Claudius was the emperor. And because they had something against the Jews, and they believed Christians were, the Christians were a part of that, that group that were expelled um, uh, from Rome, that because they thought they associated Christians with Jews, and, and Claudius expelled all the Jews from Rome. Does it sound kind of like what we've been hearing this last week about, about the Democrats re demanding that certain Republicans step down because of their decisions this last week, or, or they're going to impeach the president? He's got 10 flipping days left. Shut up and move on. Uh, you know, it's just a stupidity is what I see. And so they're, they're, they're wanting to expel everybody, and let's get them out of the Capitol. Let's get them out of the White House. Let's get them out of Congress. Let's get them out of the Senate because of what they believe or because of their ideology. You saw it happening then. It's happening today. This is not the first time we've been in the midst of crazy times, folks. It happened before. I hate to sound so brazen. I, I'm, I, I apologize for that. I apologize for that. But I'm reminded of a comedian who once said, you can get your nose fixed, you can get a tummy tuck, you can get, but you can't fix stupid. Folks, what I see right now is people so wrapped up in emotion and they're wrapped up and they've made a God of their ideology or their party 
that they've lost their mind and they're acting childish and stupid. So Claudius commanded all the Jews to, to leave Rome and the Christians with them. And so we saw, we see a backlash in that. And, I, and I'm going to talk about that again in just a few minutes. Now let's go to Acts chapter 18, go down to verse 12. When Gallio was the deputy of Achaia. Now this is a new guy, so we've got change of leadership on a local level, not just change of leadership on a national level, and I'll talk about that in a minute. The Jews made an insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. Now I'm going to read just a couple of verses. Saying, this fellow, uh, this fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said to the Jews, if this were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I would bear with you. But if this question of words and names of, of your law, look you to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drove them out from the judgment seat, or the courthouse. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of these things. And Paul afterward tarried there for a while. Oh, I'm going to stop right there. I'll come back to that. So now we've got another town. Um, let's, let's pick a town today. Portland, Minneapolis. Washington, D.C., pick, uh, pick your poison, so to speak. Now we've got a town. The whole town is in insurrection because they feel like they're not being heard. Sound familiar? They feel like that, they're, that they, they've got a question between their cultures, i.e. Black Lives Matters, i.e. the far right and the, the alternative right, and, and we've got a clash of cultures going on, and the clash of cultures is happening on a local level, and the local administrators live, nah, I'm not even going to fool with it. And so the whole town gets into an insurrection. They take a man, they beat him in front of the courthouse. Kind of sounds like the man that they've got the video, the cop who's trapped between a group of people and a door this week in, in the Washington, D.C. area, and the cop is screaming for mercy, and it actually cost him his life. Sound familiar, folks? This is not the first time this has happened. I, I sound angry. I don't mean to sound angry. I am fired up because what I see right now is a lack of strength and character and integrity in the body of Christ. We have let go of what we believe, what we have been taught for years is right, and we have set this aside and identified ourselves with a political party, and folks, we've been wrong. I'm not saying that one party is right, one party is wrong. I'm not, trying, I'm not even going to get into the politics of that. What I'm saying is, is that we have, we have let go of what our core beliefs have been and attached ourselves to either a man or a political ideology or a political platform, and we have, we've been wrong. We've lost our identity. We've lost our identity. Crazy times. Let me keep going. <clears throat> Flip to Acts chapter 19. I hope you're still with me. I, I'm going somewhere. Just, just bear with me. Just, give, just please give me just a minute. Acts chapter 19. Verse, start at verse 23. We're not going to read it all the way through, but I just want to read one verse. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. This is Acts chapter 19, verse 23, and it goes all the way through chapter 20, verse 2. And, it, and what happens here is there are some people that get mad at Paul, and, they get, and, and they're makers of silver, and you can look at it, and they cause an uproar in another city called Ephesus. This is not even Achaia where the last uproar heard, uh, happened. This is Ephesus. And so it almost tears the whole, in fact, the guy who kind of dismisses the whole thing says, folks, can I, be, can, I, can I bring it to today's terms? Folks, if we don't stop, they're going to call in the National Guard. Sound familiar? President wants to send in the National Guard. We've got things going on. If, folks, if we don't stop, they're going to send in the National Guard. That's literally what he says. And then one more, Acts 23, verse 10. Acts 23, verse 10. And when there arose a great dissension, a great uprising, a great uproar. The chief captain, fearing lest Paul should have been pulled in pieces. Literally, the uproar that was going on in the crowd was so great that the guy was afraid that somebody was going to grab Paul's right hand and somebody was going to grab Paul's left hand and pull him to pieces among the crowd. It got that bad. Guys, I want to say it again. This is not the first time we've seen crazy times. I'm, I'm about to make a statement that 
may upset some people. And I'm going to stand behind it. But listen to my words. We have for years in this country, we have for years and it's been so blessed and so protected. It's, it's unbel- by the grace of God. We have for years in this country sat by and watched the violence in Sudan and Rwanda and um, Africa and, and the Philippines and areas of the world. We have sat by and watched the violence and watched the people cry and beg for mercy and, and watched Boko Haram do things in Nigeria. We have sat by and watched the world fall fall to pieces and burn all around us and sat in this protected God grace given thank God for what he's done and sat and 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 given that just kind of uh, uh, just just uh, we've sent a few bucks over and we've sent maybe a missionary or two and we thought everything was great and now we start getting a little it, it start getting a little trouble in this nation and all of a sudden we're all praying for the rapture and for Jesus to come folks let me tell you something Grow a backbone for crying out loud. Grow a backbone. Days are going to get tougher. I promise you days are going to get harder. We have watched the world burn around us and sat in our little homes and sent a couple of bucks over a sponsored child and not done anything. We pray a little prayer every once in a while just to soothe our, our little conscience. And, and everything, we think everything is fine and hunky-dory. Now we're starting to have a little trouble, and everybody's praying for the rapture. Folks, Jesus said we would go through hard times. He said it. He promised it. Who are we to think we're so special that because our man loses in the White House that we're going to pray for the rapture to come? Grow a backbone! I didn't mean for this to go like this, but folks, we got to understand the world's going to get crazy and we got to stand up for what is right, regardless of who's in the White House. We've got to stand up for what is right regardless of who's the governor, regardless of the laws that are passed, regardless if they take this off the Internet. i still got to. I've got to stand up. I've got to stand up and preach this right here, and thus saith the word of God. I've got to stand up and preach it. If it costs me my life, I've got to do it. Why? Because this is right when everything else is wrong. We stand and whine and complain because a new man got into the office when there are people around the world starving, people around the world being, being, cr- being crucified and, and crushed and shot like animals because of their belief in Jesus Christ. And we think, woe is me because our man lost. Shut up. Give me a flipping break. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. But folks, we got to hear this. We got to hear it. And if you shut me off, then, then fine. This is not the first time crazy times have happened. Let me flip it around. Can I, can I just give you just a, a word of encouragement? If you're still listening, if, I, if you've cut me off, I, 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 uh, I understand. How do we respond? How do we respond? Acts chapter 12. I'm going to go through again. Sorry, folks, I feel this in my heart. We have become so spoiled and so rotten. We, we are the 16-year-old child that's been given everything in their life that is mad and upset because they got a used car instead of a new car that was bought by their parents. Instead of just happy they had a car. That's what we've become in America.
Acts chapter 12. After the death of Herod. Verse 23 says that he died. Verse 24, but the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. The king died. Came in a new king. You know what Paul and Barnabas did? Their job. They focused on the job. They focused on their mission. They focused on what God had placed in their heart. Folks, in the midst of this craziness out there, this right here and us are the only voice of sanity. Our methods may change. Our mission cannot. We have got to stay focused on the mission. We have got to stay focused on the calling. We have got to stay focused on what God has given us to do. We can't change regardless of who's in the White House and regardless of what's going on out there. Let me give you the next step, how we respond. Acts chapter 18. Again, I'm going back through the same passages of Scripture. Acts chapter 18, after they beat the guy Sosthenes and Gallio said whatever, it says after this, Paul tarried there yet a good while. He stayed. He didn't run. I've got friends and family that talk about, let's go, to all, let's go back to Australia, or let's go to Australia because they're still a Christian nation. No, they're not. There is no such thing as a Christian nation. People are Christian. Nations are not. Australia is not, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been told maybe we ought to pack up and go to Australia. No, 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 we don't run. God has placed us right here, right now, for a reason and a purpose. Folks, you may be the only thing that keeps your neighbor from going to hell. You may be the only person that keeps your coworker from going to hell. Don't run. Don't quit. Don't hide. Don't shirk your responsibility. Stand strong. Stay true to the word of God, to the person of Christ. We don't run. Acts chapter 20, verse 2, again, in the midst of all this. And when he had gone over those parts, he had given them much exhortation. He came into Greece. We've got to encourage one another. Hard days are coming. I'm not saying that, that uh, you know, we're, we're a bunch of lone rangers. Yes, hard days are going to come. I've cried and I have shed tears and I have prayed about what's happening and what's going on in this world and about the calling that I have here in this, in this ministry and stuff. And I need you and you need me to encourage one another to, to build up our strength, to encourage, encourage, to put courage in. There are going to be days you want to hide. There are going to be days you want to run. In those days, call a brother or sister in Christ and get some encouragement, get some courage, get some backbone put back into you by listening to a brother or sister in Christ, have them praying with you. How about this? How about picking up the phone and calling someone else? We need to encourage one another, folks. We've got to have one another. There's going to come a day they're going to tell us we can't meet. We need to do it if they put us in jail. Even Paul and Barnabas in jail sang praises and encouraged one another. Wherever we are, we've got to encourage one another, folks. What's the next thing we do? Acts 25. Acts 25, verse 11. Now this one is going to, it may mess with you for a second, but just listen. For if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these, these accuse me, no man may deliver me unto them. I appeal unto Caesar. This is Paul. The last thing we do. So number one, we stay focused on the mission. Number two, we don't run. Number three, we encourage one another. Number four, we trust God. Regardless. Paul knew, Paul knew that the the hierarchy and the political machine and the Jews was corrupt. Paul knew that the the political machine and the politics of Rome was corrupt. Paul knew those things. Paul had been told, if you go to Jerusalem, you will die. And Paul still trusted God in the middle of it and said, if I've got to go to Jerusalem, then so be it. And in the middle of it, appealed to the Caesar, the very one that on the surface in this planet looked like he was the man that held his life in his hands. And Paul knew that if I go before Caesar, God is still in control. So he appealed under Caesar. He followed the rules. We cannot, listen folks, I believe we ought to make our voice heard. I believe we should vote. I believe that 
within a lawful assembly, we go to the town halls, we go to the city councils, we go before the governors, we go to the president, we write letters, we do whatever we do to lawfully make our voices heard. We don't riot. We don't break laws to get our point across. We stand in lawfully, prayerfully, thoughtfully, in the spirit, in courage, stand up and say what we ought to say. That's what Paul did. I appeal to Caesar. And he trusted God in the process. You still with me? I hope so. And then Acts 20, 28 says, take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves. We've got to be on guard, folks. We cannot let the craziness of the world. The old saying is, it's not the water around the boat that sinks it, it's the water that gets in the boat that sinks it. We can't let the craziness of the world get in here or get in here. We've got to take heed to ourselves. Just a couple of thoughts to end with. I, I, I want to be, just listen to me very clear. I'm going to give you one little scripture. Matthew chapter 2. I, I hope you know my heart. I hope you haven't cut me off. Please just listen to me for a second. Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him, or appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. Listen to me for a second. I want to say this again. I love our president, and I, have, I love his policies. I love what he has done. I love him. I loved his policies. I have not loved his personality. He's loud. He's obnoxious. He says things on Twitter. I wish he would have never found Twitter, but whatever, it is what it is. But listen to me, folks, listen. It was not his policies that turned the nation against him and against those that support him. It was his personality. Now, just bear with me. In Matthew chapter 2, the death of Herod opened the door for Jesus to come back and to be where he was supposed to be in God's plan. There have been a lot of people in this nation that have turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to the children of God because they have, they have connected us as Trump supporters. I'm just going to be honest. They have connected us as Trump supporters, and maybe the fact that Trump has been in the White House has closed the door to gospel of the to the gospel to people who just connect us or associate us with Trump because of his personality, not his policies, his personality. It may be, listen, it may be that Trump getting out of office may open doors because those people that are against Trump have put all their hope in Biden. And when Biden gets into the office and all of a sudden the world is not all of a sudden right and it's rainbows and, and sunshine and, and, you know, and, and you know, lemon drops and gum drops and everything's just hunky-dory and all that. When we get a new man in the office and all of a sudden the world is not fixed, it might be that a change in the office may open the door that wasn't there before. And if you'll remember last Sunday, I preached about the fact that one of the things that God said he would do to a people who are unqualified, we're not qualified, but he doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And so he's going to give us the qualifications that we need to be able. One of the things he said he would do, if you'll remember last Sunday, is he would open doors. It just might be that the changing of the president might open doors because when people who have put their hope in Biden find out that Biden is not the answer, it may open the door for us to step in and say, no, Biden never was the answer, but I know who the answer is. Is, and his name is Jesus. See, we we got it. We got to get that, folks. We got to get that. It might be in God's great plan that the changing from Trump to Biden might open doors that weren't open before. I apologize for my outburst earlier. But I'm telling you, I feel this in my soul, in my 
gut in my core. So I've told you how we respond. Let me, let me give it to you again. We stay focused on the mission. We don't run. We encourage one another. We trust God, and we take heed to ourselves. We watch ourselves. That's how we respond. What's the attitude, the motivation in which we respond? Was my opening chapter, my opening scripture, excuse me. He's sending us as sheep into the wolves. But we're not going alone. In that moment, in that time, over the next few days and weeks and months and years, you're facing that that co-worker who's not a believer. You're facing that boss who's threatened you who's not a believer. You're facing the governor or the mayor or the council or the president or somebody who's, or your teacher who's not a believer. And that door opens for you. Say what the Spirit gives you. Why? Because you're not alone. He's with you every step of the way. So we go. We go with a mission, we go focused, we go intent, we don't run, we don't back down, we stand up, we declare the truth, right is right, wrong is wrong, I don't care what the government says, I don't care how your neighbor feels, I don't care what your neighbor identifies as, listen, there's only two genders, abortion is wrong, it's not a political issue, it's a moral issue, the drug problem in this country is not a political issue, it's a moral issue, the murder problem rate in this country is not a political issue, it's a moral issue and no politics is going to fix it the only thing that's going to fix it is the one who can change the heart and his name is jesus and we got to stand up and realize that and then when we get into those situations trust god to give you the words to say I'm like everyone else. I believe the Lord is coming. And I pray it soon, just like everyone else. But let me tell you what I'm ready for. I'm ready for the fact that it may not be soon. I'm hoping he comes today. I'm prepared that I'll die in this world in the natural. And that I will face hard times. And that I will face decisions that may cost me jobs, may cost me money, may cost me my life. But I've got to determine right here, right now, that I'm going to make the right decision no matter what they throw at me. And in the process, believe that my life will be lived out for the glory of the one who saved my life. So folks, be vigilant, be focused, be intent, be, a, be purposeful, be mindful. Encourage one another. Watch out for yourself. Don't let what's out there get in here. It's not the water around the boat that sinks it, it's the water in the boat. Don't let it get to you. Keep looking up. Your redemption draweth nigh. And folks, I just want to end in prayer and just know again, I, I get the way I get, I get so fired up about this because i love him i love you and i and i just feel like sometimes even in my own ministry i feel like sometimes i patty cake too much in that i don't tell you like it is sometimes and 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 folks the only thing that's going to get us through is the unadulterated unfiltered truth of the word of god he told us tough days were coming we got to prepare and i tell you this because i love you I love you like I could never express. So let's end in prayer. And then we'll go from there. Heavenly Father, I love you. And uh, Lord, I got to practice what I preach. 
and ch check my own heart and my own self and to make sure that I am ready and prepared to face the days ahead and that I do what I need to do to make sure that my children are prepared for the days ahead and to make sure that this church, the people in it, the, 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 the flock that I have been called to shepherd are prepared for the days ahead. Lord, I am firmly convinced it will not get easier. But I am also firmly convinced that you will give us the strength to stand. Lord, today, I pray something that was said would reach a heart and a soul. And God, that, that my, my own emotions and that my own my own lack of, 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 of strength and ability, God, would, would be set aside and that people would, would hear what was said and, God, that it would strengthen our heart and give someone the, the strength and determination to carry on. And, God, I pray that today you would move in this body and move through this church and, Lord, that we would see souls saved and that we would see the kingdom of heaven enlarged because hell is real. Why do I know that? Because your word says that and your word is true. And so, God, we've got to do all that we do to encourage one another and to see the lost saved and to see the broken whole and to see the sick healed. God, today, give us a new a, a new focus on the mission that we're not sidetracked by 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 the, the uh, and I've, I've heard about this god we've talked about it for years the color of the carpet oh i forget all that god that we're not sidetracked by our own agendas people come to church with an agenda let's set our own agendas aside god and focus on your agenda and not be sidetracked by little details god today Help us to be ready for the call that you have placed in our lives. Lord, we love you. We love you. And we look forward to the day we will see you again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening. Again, um, right quick, those that are on the, the fast list for this week, um, Today is the 10th. Uh, that's Tina, Amy, Meredith, Amy Stinson, uh, Judy, BJ, Brianna, uh, Christy, and then Jamie Fincher uh, the next seven days. And uh, God bless you is my prayer. Thank you for listening. Remember, Wednesday night will be online, next Sunday online, and then the following Wednesday night we'll be back in service. We'll see you soon.